Thank you. Um, the time has come to deal with the second special town meeting of the day, the so-called Harrington property. Um, I'll now entertain a motion to recess this annual town meeting uh, until the adjournment of the special town meeting, which was called for for on this date. So. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say, all those in favor, hold your hand up. All those opposed. Mr. Weiler, let me know when you have a vote, please. We have a vote. And it is what? Unanimous yes. Mr. Brogner, do we have a vote? Yeah, it is. Carry your vote to approve. And it was a unanimous vote here. The motion, the motion carries. Um, before we, before, before we, before we. That's truly annoying. Uh, before we, before we start the special town meeting. Um, we did have some issues with the electronic voting system before. We think we may have resolved them. I think we think we may have resolved the issues with electronic voting in the main gym only, in the high school gym only. So a couple of things. We're going to try it out in a vote that is meaningless here, just to make sure it works. But before we do that, if you're holding a a voting handset, thank you, and you have a pink or blue piece of paper in it, it will not work in this room. It was originally given to you with the hopes that you'd be using it in either the cafeteria or the middle school. If that is the case, you can go to the main desk and get, come on up to the front of the room and, and our town clerk will change it out for one that will work in this room, we hope. So that's the first part of business. The second part is don't push the bottom left hand button that says channel, do not push that. But when it comes time to vote, in the very top left-hand corner, it says one with a slash A, and you're going to push that for yes. And the middle button says two with a slash B, and you're going to push that for no. Um, that makes sense? Everybody got that? So what we're going to ask you to do now to see if this works is, are we ready? Can, can we take a vote? So we're gonna we're gonna try just a test vote. If you if you'll push whatever either one or two, if it's working, you will see the one or two with a slash in the A or the B. The receiver is here in the front of the room. If you could aim it at the towards the uh, back of the back of the screen, that would be most helpful. The, the numbers seem to be turning up and up and up. It appears as if it's working. Is anybody uh, pushing the button and frustrated because it's just a big circle with a line through it? No. Okay. So we will use electronic voting in this room, and that may make life somewhat simpler. Um, as you may know, when we get to actually voting on this article, it will take a two-thirds vote, and so precision is, is most important. I get it. Uh-huh. So we, we will need just a couple of minutes as our town clerk is distributing handsets to people who need them. She will give you one. Go out and get a holly, please. Um, no. So, <laughs> woman walking out the door with the box has some handsets, and we may and we may in fact run out of handsets. Perfect. Yeah. Very good, thank you.
had to deal with a car accident yesterday and broke both of the legs. It was a nightmare. Welcome to COVID. 2020. Take your pick. See here. Moderator, we block audio. We'll, we'll review that one more time. That's a good point. I'm sorry? We'll do that again. It's a good point. Who's in charge of audio? Uh, well, if you're not speaking, you're not getting any Friend, we haven't been, yeah. we haven't been saying much. Um, so that may be the issue. I'm getting a, a thumbs up from the people who are running the audio and they say it's working now. So we're getting close. That's correct, thank you. So we're getting close to being able to start. Um, our town clerk has been handing out additional handsets so that we can do electronic voting in this room only, this room only. If you have a handset that has a blue or pink piece of paper that came with it, it will not work in this room. You need to change it out. Um, and for those who, who missed it before, um, the instructions on using this are as follows. The first is do not push the button in the bottom left-hand corner that says channel. Don't do that. That's not a good thing. Um, the button that says one with an A, the top left-hand corner, is what you'll press if you want to vote yes. The button next to it, which is the two with the B, that's the one you want to push if you want to vote no. Um, when we call for a vote, 
Um, the receiver is on the back of this uh, monitor, so if you can aim your, your voting device towards it, that will be helpful. Um, you will know if it works if when you push it, you see a green light flash in the right-hand corner and you see the one with the A or the two with the B um, and you will know it works. If you see a, a circle with a line through it, then we're having an issue. It's not working. It's not, not receiving a vote. If when you go to vote, you push one and you meant to push two, that's fine. Just push the two and that will erase the first vote. Um, and you'll be voting in the negative if that's what you wanted to do or vice versa. Um. Very good. So we're going to reconvene a special town meeting that started way back on March, back in March when we were originally going to have this town meeting and uh, deal with a special town meeting for one item only and that is the purchase of the Harrington property. Mrs. Sullivan, if, if we may have a motion. If we may have a motion under Article 1 for the special town meeting called for this time and place. Okay. I move that the town, as recommended by the Community Preservation Committee, A, authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, or eminent domain, and on such terms and conditions as the Board of Selectmen deems to be in the best interests of the town, for open space, historic preservation, community housing, agricultural water supply protection, rare species protection, and or passive recreation purposes. All or portions of the parcels of land located on Temple Street and Laurel Street, shown on a plan of land on file at the office of the town clerk, and identified as assessor's parcels 037 dash zero two two dash zero 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 three seven dash zero two two dash zero zero one zero three seven dash zero two two dash zero zero two zero three seven dash zero two two dash zero zero three and zero three seven dash zero zero two dash 005. B, appropriate the sum of $2,350,000 for the purchase, for the purpose, excuse me, of funding said acquisition and costs incidental or related thereto, of which $599,548 is transferred from Community Preservation Unreserved Undesignated Fund Balance $92,895 is transferred from the Community Preservation Open Space Reserve. $282,699 is transferred from Community Preservation Historical Reserve. $492,858 is transferred from the Community Preservation Community 421. 421. Sorry, I apologize. 421,858 is transferred from the Community Preservation Community Housing Reserve and 625,000 is borrowed with the remaining sum of 328,000 to be funded by the trustees of the Duxbury Affordable Housing Trust and to authorize the treasurer with the approval of the Board of Selectmen to borrow 625,000 sum under Mass General Law Chapter 44B, Section 11, and or any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town, therefore, 
and any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, less any such premium applied to costs of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the costs approved by this vote with the reduction of borrowing authority, authority therefore by a like amount in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 20. C, authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, accept, and expend any funds that may be provided by the Commonwealth or other public or private sources to defray all or a portion of the costs of said acquisition, including, but not limited to, grants and or reimbursement from the Commonwealth under the Self-Help Act, General Law Chapter 132A, Section 11, parentheses, now so-called LAND land grants, close friends, which grants and or funds so received shall be used to repay all or a portion of the sum appropriated from the Community Preservation Fund here under and to enter into all agreements and execute any and all instruments as may be necessary or appropriate to effectuate the ongoing acquisition, D, authorize the Board of Selectmen to grant and or accept deed restrictions pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 184, Sections 31 through 33, in compliance with General Law Chapter 44B, Section 12A, and in the portions of the property dedicated to one or more of the aforesaid purposes, and further, E, authorize the Board of Selectmen and or the Conservation Commission to enter into management agreements for up to 10 years as may be necessary for the purposes of this article on terms deemed by the Board of Selectmen and or the Conservation Commission to be in the best interest of the town. Second. Would you like me to repeat? We have a motion and a second. Um, I, we have Mrs. Morris who has some comments she'd like to make. Yes, please. Can you hear me? Okay. I, <clears throat> Good afternoon. I'm Holly Morris. I don't know if oh, this mask is awful. Um, I'm chair of the CPA committee. The purpose for acquiring the 17 acre property is threefold community housing, historic preservation, and open space. The land consists of a five acre hayfield and a Butts conservation land. It is within Duxbury's Aquifer Protection Overlay District is priority habitat of rare species and also estimated habitat of rare wildlife. An historic house and outbuildings depict Duxbury's agricultural heritage. First of all, for years we have been in discussions with Pauline Harrington on the sale of her agricultural land, but we could not meet an agreed price. In May 2019, the owner submitted a notice of intent to sell the entire property for $2.2 million, which was rejected as it was not limited to only the land classified under Chapter 61A and did not constitute a bona fide offer under that chapter. In December 2019, we received another submission. However, the owner removed acreage from the chapter lands and recharacterized the chapter lands without notice to the town. We were offered less land for an inflated price of 2.25 million. In addition, the buyer, Banner Construction, had the option to purchase the non-chapter land that included the house and roughly five and a half acres of residual land and wetland for $10. The residual land and wetlands are on the eastern portion of the property, abutting town conservation land. Town Council determined this as a non bona fide offer. In January 2020, Mr. Harrington's attorney presented several purchase op options, 
that Mr. Harrington and Banner Construction would be amenable. Again, town council's of the opinion that we have not received a bona fide offer. The CPC approved this article for town meeting because of the outpouring of interest in preserving the historic house and field and a real concern as to how a sizable development will negatively impact the neighborhood. In addition, there is a proposal for a 40 unit 40B right across the street from this property. These are significant changes to a quiet part of the town that supports agriculture, a kids camp, camp wing is in the, in the neighborhood, and conservation land that supports diverse wildlife. As was noted in the motion, the funds for this acquisition, if approved, is $2,350,000. This will have a significant impact on our CPA reserves. The open space, community housing, and historic reserves will each be drawn down to $100,000 and the undesignated reserve will be roughly a million fifty thousand by the end of fiscal year 2021. Any acquisition of land or future projects may be delayed if possible or incur borrowing. If passed, what will be done with this land? The intent is to place an historic preservation restriction on the house and sell it. The field is to remain a field, and Article I authorizes the Board of Selectmen or the Conservation Commission to enter into management agreements for up to 10 years. Development of some of the land is necessary, bringing property back onto the tax rolls. The town will have more control as to how this is developed, and the Duxbury Affordable Housing Trust will be directly involved in that process. With that, I would like to ask Tag Carpenter to speak about the historic significance of this property. Thank you and stay healthy. Good afternoon, Tag Carpenter, Summer Street. Uh, I'd like to mention some brief facts about the historic significance. This uh, property is known generally in historical circles as the Simmons Farm. It's originated from the uh, emigration of Moses Simmons Leidenweld from Holland in 1604, along with Philippe Delano, who were 16 and 17 years old at the time. They were successful uh, corn farmers in Plymouth, were granted land in Plymouth in 1623, and after Plymouth started collecting taxes, uh, they immigrated to Duxbury. In 1637, both Philippe Delano and Moses Simons were granted land in Duxbury and that is the land we're discussing today. Uh, a series of marriages and children. In uh, 1695, John Simmons inherited the land, and his son Isaac married Martha Chandler. This thus became known as the Isaac Simmons Farm. There uh, gave birth to a daughter in 1698, and that's the date that's been assigned to the house. We know that the house was built sometime between 1689 and 1711. Uh, these are uh, just some of the facts. I'm not going to belabor the meeting with the details, but it is a highly significant historical property and to our knowledge is the only first period farmhouse with its original pasture land intact in the state of Massachusetts. Uh, finally, I'd like to add that on, in a meeting on July 29th, the Historical Commission uh, made a motion to support the town's purchase and to uh, ex extend all available efforts on the part of the seven commissioners in order to accelerate the placement of protective uh, language in the deed and to have this house sold in an expeditious manner. I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you. I believe the Affordable Housing Trust. Yeah, um, my name is Martha Himes and I'm the vice chair of the Affordable Housing Trust. And first off, we, we do want you to know that if this purchase goes through, there will be affordable housing on the property. However, it will absolutely not be a 200 unit development. We are not developers. We are longtime Duxbury residents. All of us have lived in town 
for a minimum of 20 years. I think George Wadsworth has been on the planning board that long alone. I'm a former chair of the Historical Commission, and we see our charge as creating affordable housing that works for Duxbury. Our goal, in general, is either to buy or con and convert existing houses or build new houses that look like they belong in Duxbury. Habitat for Humanity has partnered with us to build a house on Lincoln Street, a house on Lakeshore Drive, and three duplexes on Temple Street. Three of the Temple Street units are affordable, and three are moderate. The largest project we've been involved with so far is the plan with Champion Builders for a 20-home cul-de-sac, of which five homes will be affordable, five will be moderate, and 10 will be market rate. You may be surprised to learn what income levels qualify for affordable and moderate housing in Duxbury. A family of four earning $95,000 qualifies for affordable housing. That same four-person family earning $119,000 qualifies for moderate housing. There's a little more to it than that. They can't have much in savings, for example. But the people buying these units are neither unemployed nor impoverished. The trust is not in the business of making a profit. In fact, we generally lose money on every affordable unit we create. It costs us, on average, about $250,000 to create one affordable unit. Now back to the Temple Street land. Right now, we don't know where or what we'd be constructing. We're open to suggestions from the neighbors and the community. If this article passes, the portion of land to be granted to the Affordable Housing Trust will be determined at future meetings and probably be conveyed, I believe, to the Affordable Housing Trust at another town meeting, um, probably next year. And what is built on that land will be determined in a series of public affordable housing trust meetings to which we invite your participation. The way we see it, we're building housing for young couples starting out or older couples scaling down or families that want a small home on a quiet street in a little rural town. We are thrilled to be part of this partnership with the Conservation and Historical Commissions. These three boards working together really encapsulate what Duxbury is all about. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Sullivan from the Finance Committee, do you have, have any comments? Um, I, I would feel it um, neglectful if we didn't comment. As you can see, we voted unanimously against this article. This is not a, um, uh, a voice of, uh, against affordable housing or open space or historic preservation. We were fulfilling our mandate to look at this as a financial endeavor. We have deep concerns that um, CPC is going to now be um, virtually gutted of all funds that they have available. When this started, they were hopeful that they were going to go back to the 3% surcharge as opposed to the 1% that currently stands. In light of what is going on um, economically, the um, folks that had brought that petition have, indefinite, were, have asked to be indefinitely postponed. And I don't feel confident that that would have prevailed in these times anyway. Um, we are not in a position um, as a town to support um, additional bonding. Um, we are not in a position where um, we feel that if litigation um, is pursued by the other parties that have been involved in this purchase, that um, we have a lot of money to defend against. So in light of all of those concerns being financial, we just could not support this purchase at this time. We do not have the money to support this. And again, um, I'm sure that that is about as popular in this room as, as COVID, but um, we did feel as though our mandate is such that we needed to speak from the point of view that you ask us to serve. And, um, and as such, we voted unanimously not to support the purchase of this land. Thank you. Thank you. Before, before I open this up for general discussion, a couple of things I want to mention. Um, if you are in any of the remote locations, and at this point we have people in the, in the um, courtyard, in the middle school gymnasium, and in the cafeteria, 
Um, if you have comments or questions that you wish to share, you need to come to this room, to the high school gymnasium, stand in line to use any one of the, any one of the um, uh, microphones. There are two of them here. When we take a vote, this will be a two-thirds vote because it involves borrowing, so there may be counting involved. If we're here in the main gymnasium, the high school gymnasium, we will be voting electronically. However, the other locations, the remote locations, will be voting manually, and so we will have to count the votes. Uh, that having been said, it's, the floor is now open to anybody with a, with a question or a comment, and as I've said before, I will not recognize somebody a second time until everybody else has had a chance for their first question. The gentleman over here, I think, was anxious and first in line. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Tom Nee, 590 Bay Road. I have two questions. Uh, could I have some clarification on the, um, the three designated fund balances? It sounds like those will be gutted, but I thought I heard that the undesignated amount would, uh, undesignated uh, community preservation fund would still exceed a million dollars. Is that correct? Can somebody provide an answer? Uh, as Holly Morris had stated, it would be at about one million and fifty thousand left over. Okay. And my other question is, um, what are the chances of getting a state grant that that are mentioned in the in the motion? Does somebody have an answer? I guess that's the answer. <laughs> we have great hope. Gentleman to my right, um, I'm, in, in the plaid I'm, shirt. I'm Fred Lequier from Washington Street. I came here today thinking I was going to be voting against this proposal, and then I heard the discussion of affordable housing, and I have to say, first of all, I'm part of the effort on prejudice-free Duxbury, and I hope that many people will listen to the podcast that we have on Wednesday, when you hear the stories of people who have experienced prejudice here, it will move you. Having said that, I believe that this town needs more diversity, and I am completely in favor of more affordable housing in the town so that we have a more representative population. So I would encourage you to consider that as you vote. Thank you. Thank you. Um, gentleman in the yellow shirt, I think, has been waiting. And then a woman over here to my left. And is a gentleman with a, with a pink shirt. Uh, are, are you in line to, to be recognized? OK, thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Harold Anderson from 17 Duxboro Trail. And I was here, I, I think that this is an opportunity a rare opportunity for the town to have a resource for all of its citizens. Um, I would like to flesh out some of the agricultural options that, were, that are here. I mean, people see agriculture, but when Pauline Harrington was alive, she graciously allowed me to have a garden on the property. And I had four children I raised right around the corner. I raised butternut squash, pumpkins, potatoes, tomatoes, you know, usual garden fare. But now that my children are gone, I don't use that property anymore because I had a downsize. But I just like to tell people, you know, there's an artesian well on the property. There's a full-sized working barn, and it's a perfect place to have a community garden for people to go and have a, a plot. There's, you could have a CSA for people to, you know, you, you pay so much up front and with, we have the proper person managing it in there. You could have a CSA where people come and pick up their groceries. You could even have a community source farmer's market. And for you people that don't do any gardening, um, that's my hobby, this, you just don't have to raise tomatoes and peppers like most people do. I mean, you can raise multiple types of squash, beans, potatoes, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, beets, carrots, onions, you name it, they will all grow here in Duxbury with the proper irrigation and tending to crops. So I just wanted to make sure people were, were aware of the opportunity here for the community 
in addition to all these other things we're talking about. And Thank you. That's it. Thank you. The, wo the woman on my left, and, and then the woman in the blue, blue shirt. Uh, Leslie Hart, Plumfield Lane. And can I ask, through all this paraphernalia, can people hear me? No. Okay, yep. Nope. Make sure you talk directly to the microphone. Is this any better? Yeah. <laughs> um, first off, I am sort of uh, halfway joining Betsy on the COVID team of popularity. Uh, but I wanted to mention that I was one of the people um, involved in trying to get uh, the article heard to reinstate the 3% CPA. And <clears throat> we discussed it mostly online. Uh, a few people wanted it to go through, but the majority uh, <coughs> requested to please table it, which we have done. Um, it, it is just obviously not the time to ask people to be giving more money in taxes. However, um, this is not the only property in Duxbury that is going to face this. As <clears throat> has been mentioned, there's already a 40 unit, 40 B project right across the street. And it's not as sexy an issue, but for me, this is in large part about our water supply. So much of these properties that are still left in Duxbury to be developed are either over the aquifer, they're uh, involving wetlands, uh, they're near reservoirs, and we are going to face this question again. And I think, Lord knows when COVID will be over and when we will all be put back together again. Um, but at some point, I hope, even if it's 10 years from now, that we do reconsider the reinstatement. Um, having said that, I wanted to ask... The, is, the issue before us is buying this property, not yes, whether know. we will have a 3% um, I, I, CPA I just, surcharge. I just wanted to acknowledge Betsy, that, and somebody else had mentioned that, mm -hmm. that yes, this yes. is definitely an issue. Um, I did want to ask, uh, I believe that there are at least two buildable lots on that property, possibly three, and I am wondering um, if the intent is to sell them at market value and how much um, might be potentially gained from the sale of these two lots plus the sale of the historic home once it is deemed historic so that it can't be changed and if this will be um, applied to the amount borrowed. Thank you. Does, does someone have an answer for Seeing none, um, I'll recognize the woman in the blue shirt. Thank you. Sheila Lynch Benton in 344 West Street. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the CPC for making this article possible. Without their help, we wouldn't be here today. I congratulate them for the extraordinary mathematics they did to bring this article forward. Any other town in the United States that had a 1696 farmhouse with its original pasture built by John Alden's great-grandson that has changed hands only twice would not be debating whether to preserve this property. But because Duxbury has a plethora of historic properties, here we are. I love the layers of Duxbury's history we have many 19th century shipbuilder homes. This is not one of them. We have many 20th century grand estate houses. This is not one of them. We even have 18th century revolutionary war houses. This is also not one of them. This 1696 original farmhouse, first period house with its original pasture is a testament to the early days of Duxbury. It's the seventh oldest house in Duxbury. It's a miracle it even exists. Some want to save the property because of the threatened box turtle. 
Some want to save the property because of the water supply. Some want to save the property because of the idyllic rural nature. Some because it abuts a large conservation parcel. These are all good reasons. Some, including the Finance Committee, yeah. say this is the wrong time to purchase this property. We do live in special times, but I think it's the only time to purchase this property. The current owner, Nathaniel Harrington, met with the Duxbury Historical Commission last summer, and we gave him a 12-month demolition permit starting October 1st. It expires in two months. Then anyone can demolish this historic structure in two months, and who knows what would be put on the land. This is effort is exactly what CP fund, CPC funds were created for, historic, conservation, open space, and affordable. All buckets of the CPC will be met with the purchase of this property. I'm extremely grateful to the CPC for this effort after years, and I know Holly Morris has been looking at this property for more than a decade. The CPC money cannot be used on our poor school budget. It can't be used on our worthy firemen. It can't be used on our worthy policemen. Our DPW barn needs repair. The library, the bridge, none of the CPC money, if we vote this down, can be transferred to buckets we really need. The notion, the law of CPC, is it can only be used for historic open space and affordable. And this property meets all of it. And if it's turned down, none of that money will go to the buckets that we really need today. Um, the Duxbury Historical Commission has voted, as Tag talked about, to help with this effort to sell the house and to make it expeditious. We live in special times right now, and now is the time to come together as a community for a special vote. I urge you to vote yes to preserve this unique property that is part of Duxbury's unique historical legacy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will rec recognize the woman in the pink shirt, the gentleman in the green shirt, and then this gentleman over here on my left. Uh, gentleman. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you to put your mask on, please. Thank you. Oh, okay. I'm going to ask you to ask the people on that side to please move over to the... Please move over to the other microphone um, as we sanitize the microphone that was just used. Yeah. This, this is a different town meeting in oh so many ways, but then again, the times are different in oh so many ways. And that's convenient. Everybody's now lined up. I don't have to go back and forth. New normal. <laughs> My name is Elizabeth Shedd, and I am a long, long... I might suggest you move forward and stand right on top of that X. Right there? Okay. If at first I don't succeed, I do try again. Thank My you My name is much. Elizabeth Shedd, and I'm a long-term resident of Franklin Street, around the corner from the Harrington property. Um, within all the conversations that people have had with you, I remember taking my little kids for a walk down Temple Street, three of them, where we would see the cows with their bathtub. And my daughter, now approaching 40, is still a huge cow person. And she keeps jokingly saying, Mom, when are they going to take their bath? So within that, there is the emotional heritage of the property, the historical and all that. But also now I take my children or grandchildren for walks on Franklin Street and Temple Street. And it's like a turnpike. So as a, again, a long-term resident of the area and on a fixed income, I truly thank the Finance Committee for looking at now. But within all the other things that we have voted on today, 
we do need to look at what the long-term value of this property is, keeping it for ourselves, and knowing that we will be bringing enrichment and stabilization, believe it or not, to our taxes by doing what we've been talking about. But what are the long-term effects if a development goes in there in terms of our infrastructure? Thank you. Thank you. I'll recognize the gentleman in the green shirt, although my uh, sense is we've sort of heard, heard the same sentiment several times over. And uh, may, I'll try to be brief, Mr. And, well, perhaps we're coming up on a time where we might want to take a vote. But please, okay. I, don't right. want to, I don't um, want to stifle debate. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'll be brief because I do uh, agree with the previous speakers that we really ought to purchase this property. My name is Ben Cronin, by the way. I live on Pill Hill Lane. Thank you. Um, and I, I've lived in this town uh, my whole life, except for college and graduate school. And I have to declare my full interest. I'm an academic historian by training. I wrote my dissertation on early Duxbury uh, by I, the town clerk's office. You may remember me. I was in there looking at old town meetings from the 16, 17, early 1800s. And one thing you see in those meetings is a determination to protect Duxbury's common resources. And if this is not a common resource for the town of Duxbury, uh, I don't know what is. You know, the great uh, Anglo-Irish statesman Edmund Burke said that society is not just our present generation. We owe duty to our past and to uh, our posterity, our future. So with all that in mind, I, I'll close by saying we shouldn't exchange our birthright for a mess of pottage, to quote the Old Testament. Uh, we really ought to purchase this house. Thank you very much. Cap Kane, 251 Harrison Street, three quick points. Um, I happen to have been on the committee appointed by the moderator that originally proposed CBC to the town, which was overwhelmingly approved. So I'm familiar with the background and how the money should be spent. I cannot think of a better project that um, encompasses everything that the CPC stands for. No other project in town that it has done encompasses all three aspects of affordable housing, historic preservation, and open space. So this is the ideal project to drain whatever funds remain of the CPC at the current time. Number two, I live in a house that is, has a historic preservation restriction on it. It's the, a white house on Harrison Street that the horse farm. And I can tell you that the tax assessors feel that it's very fully uh, appreciating in value. So there is no apparent restriction on <laughs> price appreciation for a historic preservation restriction. Um, and lastly, um, just to go back to the Finance Committee's concerns, all of us are aware that the Federal Reserve has dropped interest rates for borrowing to just about zero. And since only a small component of the money to be needed actually has to be borrowed by the town, we'll never find a time to borrow money that they're almost giving away. So there's no reason to be concerned if we're borrowing a few hundred thousand dollars to acquire this unique and very special pro property. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Um, Mark McDevitt, Chestnut Street. I have a couple of questions. Um, my concern is, first off, everybody keeps referring to this as a purchase. Is this, in fact, not a request to exercise eminent domain by the town body? Is there, a, is there a purchase contract in place with the borrower, with the, the current owner that we are seeking to purchase at that price? I think Mr. Reed has an answer for you. Can't hear you. It's the microphone. I did not want to ask you to The purchase and sale agreement would all occur after after the voters have approved this. This is the first step in that process. Then we work through the PNS agreement, get all the other stuff squared away. So this is the first step. I understand the process. I do. I, I'm just saying we do not currently have a purchase and sale agreement in place with the owner, correct? That's correct. Is there a purchase and sale agreement that is currently valid in place? with the current owner. Market conditions have gone completely, you know, hell in a handbasket. And I'm just looking, is there still a valid contract 
in place that we are competing against. It, it's my understanding that there is. Okay, so that's the litigation issue that the Finance Committee was concerned about, correct? The potential litigation, yes. Is the amount that we are approving for purchase subject to a contingency of the current purchase price that the owner has being increased by the developer that we're going to be chasing it up in market and you'd have to come back? I'm not aware of that. Um, the purchase price that we have here is the same that was being offered in the purchase price between the owner and the developer. Okay, thank you. And uh, can I ask a, a sort of technical question? Uh, various funds from the CPA are coming in from the historical, the affordable, the recreation, in various amounts. How are those amounts being allocated relative to their required purpose for expenditure? want to make sure that you know affordable housing money is not being used for historical purposes or recreation is it being done by acreage by a percentage of the purchase price how is it being allocated from those specific funds i, I can take it holly to a, to an extent obviously there's more probably of a, of a legal it's probably more of a legal question um, and maybe Jeff can take over, um, but we, we have been told that we would need to go back at a subsequent town meeting to do the proper allocation at some point. Okay. And I have one request for an amendment when you're done. Um, did, did you have an amendment you wanted to make now? Excuse me. I know uh, we're all in a hurry. I want to go if, back to the beach, too. Please, if I could. I won't take a, a motion to move the previous question has to be made at a microphone. I won't take it from the audience. Please, sir, go ahead. Um, I request an amendment that the word passive be stricken from the restriction about recreation uh, as to the use of the property. I know that, you know, there have been concerns about this before. It's never been clear why the CPC is so adamant about adding passive, and I've never heard a good explanation, so I would just like to see it struck. Thank so, you. So, so that I'm clear, Mr. McDivitt, if you could hang on just one second, so that I'm clear as to what you want to do. As I look at the motion, um, it's the sixth line down where it says, uh, protection comma rare species protection and slash or passive recreation purposes correct and you want to remove the word passive correct okay is there a second there's a second uh, we'll we will now talk about the amendment not the main motion and the vote will come first on the amendment whether we're going to make that an amended main motion or not um, Mr. McDivitt, you've, you've explained your concern. Um, is there any question or comment about, uh, does, if you look at the, if you look at the motion that's been presented to you um, on the very first page, if you look at the sixth line down, it's, it's part of the laundry list of, of reasons and purposes for this property. And it starts with the line protection, comma, rare species protection, n slash, or currently reads passive recreation purposes. The amendment requested is to change it to just end or recreation purposes. Is that correct? That's, I'm seeing his head going up and down. So the answer is yes. Um, does the proponent of this article have a comment or question? Can I speak to the do you, do you do you speak for for anybody who's I uh, speak speak as a citizen? I'd like to speak against this amendment. Well, I, I guess I'd like to ask whoever's sponsoring this article if they would like to speak. It, it, it's not required. If you don't want to speak, that's fine. I just want to give you the opportunity before we open it up for general debate. 
Typically, when we do conservation restrictions on land, we state it for passive recreation. And if you're asking for the definition, I don't have it right in front of me. Um, I don't know whether Jeff can clarify this. Jeff is our town council, just so everybody's clear. Through you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for having me here today. I can read the, uh, the definition under 44B of recreational use is active or passive recreational use, including but not limited to the use of land for community gardens, trails, and non-commercial youth and adult sports, and the use of land as a park, playground, or athletic field. Recreational use shall not include horse or dog racing or the use of land for a stadium, gymnasium, or similar structure. Now, Mrs. McNabb, please. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. So I think town meeting should understand what this amendment would do. It would allow the use of that property to be used as a playground or a ball field, a turf field, I, I think that a little bit flies in the face with the intent of this article. It's my understanding that this article is to put some very valuable land in, in our open space category. And as much as I am a huge money saver, as everybody is so sick of listening to me here, but when it comes to open space, it is the biggest bang for our buck. And if it is our intention to preserve this, take it out of the tax rolls, except for some affordable housing, which definitely we need, we wouldn't want to eliminate our, we wouldn't want to eliminate our intention of preserving some of the property for walking trails, uh, fields, uh, that kind of thing, and, ha and having it uh, be then used uh, for something like ball fields, unless that is what town meeting uh, wants to do here. So I would move, I would suggest that we not um, strike the word passive if passive is truly what we want, which is more open space protection, um, walking trails, that's it, not, not ball fields. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> is there anyone else who wishes to speak to the amendment? Seeing nobody who wishes to speak to the amendment, we'll have a vote on the amendment. Um, just to recap, uh, the amendment would remove the restriction of passive recreation and it would now just read recreation. Um, if you're here in the main gym or the high school gym, you can vote electronically. Um, all those in favor of the amendment, which would remove the word passive, vote yes or press one. All those opposed would press two. Um, voting is, whoop, we're not ready yet. Okay, so the, the cube is green, please vote. Oh, I need you to, yes, please. You'll be first, I promise. All right, we are still voting here in the main gym, um, and we still have some time. Is voting, voting is now over here in the main gym, so. Okay, we, so. Um, Check with the others, yeah. It's Mr. Brogner, do you have a vote? That's not what I was expecting.
Okay. Um, we're almost there, folks. I appreciate your patience. The amendment fails. Um, it was a unanimous vote against it in room two in the courtyard in the uh, middle school gym, and, and, we, and, and it was virtually unanimous. We had, uh, I think it was four votes in favor of the amendment. So the, amend the amendment fails. We're now back to the main motion. We are going to ask that you, I know, move to the other side of the room to use that microphone so we can. Uh, th yes, that's it. Thank you. Um, yes. So I will recognize the woman in the green shirt, the gentleman in the orange shirt, and oh, that's, th that is the order. So please. Hi. Colleen Breyer, Toby, is it on? Colleen Breyer, Toby Garden Street. I just had a question talking about the depletion of the CPCs. Are there any other projects that you may speak of that are in the works that would be affected if we do this at this time? Joe Grady, a conservation administrator. I'm also a resident at 10 Wendell Pond Road. Uh, we're presently working on two other projects uh, for the town, one of which I hope to bring to town meeting next March. I really can't disclose any of the details, but uh, I am working on two other projects at this time. Thank you. Um, and my other question is, have we talked to other groups like the trustees of the reservation is that in our, the plan, like we've done with the O'Neill Farm? The Wildlands Trust was initially involved with this project, but uh, is no longer involved. There was uh, one or two significant donors that were participating, but they are no longer involved. Uh, right now, the town of Duxbury is being asked to pay 100% of the bill for this piece of property. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, even though you may see the questions I asked, seeing that I'm against, I actually urge you to vote yes for this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, perhaps we're easing up on a vote after this gentleman in the orange shirt. We'll try a vote if that's the pleasure of town meeting. Yeah, I'm thinking it is. Okay. <laughs> Sir, please. I'd like to offer two pieces of information in response to some of the financial questions. It was discussed at prior meetings, would the proceed of sales be used to reimburse the CPA uh, fund? And they would, that's my understanding. Any proceeds from sales would go right back to CPC. Secondly, I'd like to make sure you're aware that the uh, part of the Mass Administration that manages the Community Preservation Trust Fund made a structural change to the fund at the beginning of the year where they uh, increase the amount of uh, revenue generated for distribution to the towns. And further, due to the uh, unprecedented rate of real estate transactions in the Commonwealth this year, the CPA trust fund is running at two to three times its normal accumulation of revenue. And what this means is that, uh, for example, Last year, in the, uh, the various purposes, the 10% purposes, I think we received something like $600,000. And this year, that is likely to at least double, if not more than double. So the rate at which we will be able to build up the CPA reserves will be much faster than it has been in the past. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I, I, think, I think we're all aware of what we're voting on. Um, I don't think there's a need. I don't think there's a need to repeat the motion. Um, this is a two-thirds vote, and so um, we will obviously be recording votes in this room. That's electronic. 
Um, in the remote rooms, um, if you feel comfortable calling a two-thirds vote, then please let me know when I ask for it later, when all the results are in. Otherwise, we will have to count, hand count the vote in the various rooms. So all those in favor of this purchase, press one or, uh, and all those, whoops, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, and when it turns green, when the cube turns green, the cube, cube has turned green, if you're in favor of, of purchasing the property, please press one. If you're opposed, please press two. And if you get that round circle with the line through it, please let us know. Is anybody having, is anybody having trouble? No. You are, sir? So please come forward. It's still open. All right. Mr. Moderator, I have a vote in room two. Okay. Believe it or not, we are struggling more than you are. We, it, is yours working? Yours worked, okay. Okay. Oh, paper votes. Okay, we'll add that to the total. Okay. Yeah, well. Okay, let's let's close we close the voting. Mr. Weiler. Uh, Mr. Moderator, we did, not, we did not have a unanimous vote, but I have declared a two-thirds vote as required with only four in opposition. Thank you. I have numbers here. Mr. Mr. Brogner, do you have a vote? Cafeteria is unanimous, 12 in favor, 0 against. 12 in favor, 0 against. So the motion passes. Um, I declare it a two-thirds vote. Um, in, in, I'd like to think that was for me. Um, the, to give you the numbers in this room, it was a one, two, three, 185 to 13. In this room, the, the vote total was 185 to 13. In the cafeteria, it was 12 to 0. In the, in the uh, courtyard, it was 16 to 2. 
And in the middle school gym, um, we don't have a, an exact count, but um, the moderator there, friend Weiler, believed that he had a two-thirds vote. So I declare it a two-thirds vote. Before everybody leaves, we do, do have some articles left to, we do have some articles left to be dealt with at this town meeting. If you could hang in there with us for a little bit, we'd appreciate it. And I see some people who look like they'll hang in anyway. Uh, but before everybody leaves, before, before everybody leaves, um, I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn this special town meeting, Sonny Dye, and recon do I have a second? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Meeting is adjourned. We'll now reconsider, re, I'm sorry, reconvene the annual town meeting at the point where we left, which is the beginning of Article 7. Okay. Mr. Moderator, room two, voting unanimously John, to adjourn. John, do you want me to go? Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. The, the, gym, the high school gymnasium is relatively empty now. I think we can move the people in, in the remote locations into this room. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start right away. I wanna move the people from the other room from here. Hi there. What's up?
Okay.
Town meeting will now reconvene where we left off, uh, which was the beginning of Article 7. Mrs. Sullivan. Mrs. Sullivan, we, we're, we're anxious to start on Article 7, Motion Number 1. Okie doke. I move that the town appropriate the sum of $71,115 as the small equipment and minor services budget for the purposes and in the amount specified below, and to meet said appropriation, raise and appropriate the sum of 47906 transfer the sum of 13749 from other available funds, parentheses from the balance of 311.17, Article 7, for the purchase of two IV infusion pumps, close parentheses, and to transfer the sum of $9,460 from the Waterways Improvement Fund to be expended under the direction of the town manager. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there, are there any questions, comments about, about this motion? Seeing none, I'll ask for a vote. All those in favor, please raise your right hand, or left if you'd like. Um, all opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 7, motion number 2. Small Equipment and Minor Services, I move that the town appropriate the sum of $7,000 as the Small Equipment and Minor Services budget for the purposes and in the amount specified below and to meet said appropriation, raise and appropriate the sum of $7,000 to be expended under the direction of the school committee. Second. Motion's been seconded. Are there any questions or debate? Hearing none, I'll ask for Hearing none, I'll ask for a vote. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, unanimous vote. Motion carries. All set. Ar article number eight. I move to indefinitely postpone this article. Second. We have a motion to indefinitely postpone. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, it is unanimous vote. Motion carries. Article number nine. Electronic I'm balloting. Before we start this, and really I don't mean to, to perhaps um, influence people, um, but I, will, I do feel the need to say that we have used electronic balloting for a number of, we have used electronic balloting for a number of years, um, and up until now it's been a wonderful experience. Um, um, and in fact, last year we had a, a tie vote on an amendment, and I'm not sure people would have been comfortable if we had to hand count it. So. It works very well in the, in the pack, and I'm not sure we'd try it in the gym ever again. But, but having said that, we have a motion and a sec. We need to have a motion. I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $35,000 to fund the cost of operating electronic balloting at town meetings. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? I have a question. Will 35000 be enough to get us the good machines? A uh, what? Will it be enough to get us the good machines that we had before? Um, yes. Although, although to, in, in all honesty, we have, it is the venue, not the, not the hardware that we are struggling with it today. I would ask that you use the microphone, even though we may be able to hear you, people who are watching this from, from afar may not. Susan Schofield, I'm just wondering, are we going to get reimbursed for them not working today properly? Our town clerk is ready to answer that question. Excellent, Susan. <laughs> Unfortunately, the vendor could not join us this week because she's in a state that uh, would not allow travel here in any case. She sent the equipment out. It wasn't working properly. They've already zeroed out the invoice for this year. Um, but we haven't voted this yet, have we? No. No, we haven't. Um, so, do we have a motion? Yep. Second. 
All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? We have one vote against. I declare it a majority. Motion carries. Um, article number 10, if this is going to require a two-thirds vote. This is the Duxbury Beach lease. I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $850,000 to be expended under the direction of the town manager for the purpose of leasing Duxbury Beach, being that portion of land in the towns of Duxbury and Plymouth owned by the Duxbury Beach Reservation, Inc., south of a line running approximately east to west along the northerly edge of the northerly parking area and the east end of the Powder Point Bridge subject to an area of land excluded at High Pines used by the Duxbury Beach Reservation and to authorize the Board of Selectmen or its designee to execute a lease on the behalf of the town for the period beginning July 1, 2020 and ending June 30, 2021. On such terms and conditions, the Board of Selectmen deems in the best interest of the town. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any, have any questions or comments? Hearing, hearing none, I'll call for, a, call for a vote. All those in favor, please raise your hands. All those opposed? We have, we have one vote against. I declare it meets the two-thirds requirement. Um, starting with Article 11, I'm going to ask in an attempt to speed up town meeting, I'm going to ask that we do something called a consent agenda. A consent agenda is where we lump together a collection of articles that we believe are non-controversial um, and should have no opposition and vote them all at once in one motion. So I'm going to ask that uh, a motion that the town take Articles 11, 12, 17, 19 through 26, 29 through 31, 40 and 41 out of order, and that they be passed by consent without debate in accordance with the motions published in the consent agenda provided. However, that if any voter prior to taking the vote requests the right to discuss the specific article, then said article will be removed from this motion and acted upon in the ordinary course of business. These articles, as printed in the warrant, may be approved with a single majority vote. Second. I have a motion and a second. The articles, and I will quickly tell you what they are, um, and I am reliably informed that they are all requested to be indefinitely postponed, and everybody is in agreement, uh, including the proponents of them. Um, Article 11, the 4th of July appropriation. Article 12, Pilgrim decommissioning, safe or spent fuel storage. Article 17, seawall matching grant funds. Article 19, engineering design for exit 10 Tremont Street. Article 20, proposed lease between the town of Duxbury and the Alden Kindred Spirits. Article 21, citizens petition replacement of four angled parking spaces in Hall's Corner between one Washington Street and five Standish Street and one handicapped van accessible parallel parking space. Citizens petition amended zoning bylaw article 905 plot plan accompanying application section 905.2. Article 23, Amend Zoning Bylaw Flood Hazard Area Overlay District. Article 24, Amend Zoning Bylaw Establishment of Districts. Article 25, Amend Zoning Bylaw Move the Use, Move Use to Uses to Use Table. Article 26, Amend Zoning Bylaw Administrative Cleanup and Current Zoning Maps. Article 29, Amend General Bylaws Proposed New Local Historic Districts. Article 30, Transfer of town-owned land to the Duxbury Affordable Housing Trust, Lincoln Street. Article 31, citizens petition to amend general bylaws, adding a new bylaw provision 7.26, storage of property at Shipyard Lane. Article 40, citizens petition CPA surcharge. And Article 41, appropriate funds for town pathways. Um, before I actually ask for a vote, um, I will say that many of these articles may well come back at a future town meeting by indefinitely postponing. We're not saying yes, we're not saying no, we're just saying not now. And we are expecting fall towns meetings and I think you will see most if not all of them come back at that. I, we are expecting to have a fall town meeting and I do expect at that time you will see most if not all of these articles come back at that time. So that having been said, I'll ask for a vote. All those in favor, raise their hand. Excuse me. I'm sorry. There's a question. 
Yeah, I do have a question, Mr. Moderator. Um, as, as an attorney and draftsman, I'm just, I think there might be, um, there, we maybe could use a little clarification in the motion. You're talking about the one on the orange sheet. Um, when I first read it, I was very confused because it, it says uh, that the motion is to take these out of order and that they be passed by consent, which makes it sound like we would be voting to approve all of these motions when I believe the intent is that we will be voting to indefinitely postpone all of these motions. Is that correct? I mean, all well, of I'm going to ask you to, I'm going to ask for a positive vote to indefinitely, I'm asking for a positive vote to indefinitely postpone. Then just, I, I understand that's the intent, but I think the language is not clear because it says um, that they be passed by consent, which sounds like consent. Um, could, I, could I propose a very small amendment that we change the word passed to indefinitely postponed so that we are crystal clear about what we're doing? Be before we do that, I guess I'll ask town council to chime in. He's, he's anxious at the mic. Through you, Mr. Moderator. Through you, Mr. Moderator, uh, we're going to do, you're going to vote for the consent agenda. You're going to agree to, to, to take it all at once. And then the next motion would be to indefinitely postpone all of the articles on the consent agenda. So we will have no, there, there will be no ambiguity in that. There are two different handouts, the same color, and there's some confusion about. Yeah, that, that's. I understand what okay. she's saying because I don't have that second motion either. Yeah, I don't either. I, there was only one orange okay. key player on that one. Okay, it wasn't clear. But I have this packet. <laughs> Where is it? So in the orange handout, it says that we're going to take those Warren articles out of order and decide to vote on them all together. We will then vote to indefinitely postpone them. So is that the two ways we're addressing it, is to take them out of order and group them together and then vote on them collectively to indefinitely there postpone? Are two, so yes. There are, there, are, there are two definitely separate issues. One is the consent, although the, I think the confusion is, is they both say consent agenda yeah. on the top, right? So you have a consent um, agenda that says, that says. That's article 32. Oh, consent. never mind. Never mind. <laughs> is there a second motion, Mr. Moderator? So is yes, I think, I think we, we need to vote on a motion to accept a consent agenda, and then there will be a motion that says vote to indefinitely postpone all of the articles that had been in that, and, in that list. And is that motion forthcoming? Because we haven't got it. Actually, I had a motion and seconded it, and then I explained what the articles were. So now we'll take a vote on the very okay. first, on that long motion, to allow us to do it, then we'll take a then we'll take a vote on a motion to indefinitely postpone all of those articles. Are we all comfortable with that? Very good. Does it all make sense? People understand what we're, what you're being asked to vote on. Okay. Sorry for the confusion. Um, so we're voting on the motion to combine those into one motion, and this was supposed to save time. All those. So all those in favor of that motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, motion carries uh, by majority vote. Now I'm asking for a motion to indefinitely postpone all of the articles in that motion that have been previously mentioned and discussed. Second. So moved. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, motion carries. Thank you very much. We did. So, Mr. Moderator, I just ignore the articles now as we go through. As we go through. So we're now up to Article 13, I believe. Okay, great. Thank you. 
I move that the town vote to amend the general bylaws chapter 2, town meeting section 2.3.1 as printed in the warrant. Second. Any discussions, questions, comments? This See, is just an article about publishing the warrant and publishing it on allows us to publish online. All those in favor, please raise your please raise your hand. All those opposed. Motion carries with minimal opposition. Um, Article 14. I move that the town appropriate the sum of $217,875 for the purpose of funding the recommendations set forth below from the Townwide Information Technology Master Plan as printed in the warrant, and to meet said appropriation, transfer the sum of $217,875 from free cash to be expended under the direction of the town manager. Funds to include upgrade Windows 7. As many of you know, Windows 7 is no longer supported. Um, Office 365 implementation, town only, 45,000. Backup and disaster recovery plan strategy, town only, 157,000. Second. And John, I'd like to speak to that. Article. Be my guest. Uh, Kathleen Glenn, not only Finance Committee, but co-chair of the IT Steering Committee. Um, article 14 is a request to fund the hardware and software necessary for the health, maintenance, and data security of town's IT infrastructure. More importantly, this funding is critical to upgrade and support our cybersecurity capabilities that are vital to protect us from the potential cybersecurity threats and breaches. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, I can't think of another time in history where secure IT services are an absolute necessity to conduct the town of Duxbury's business. Now more than ever, we need IT capabilities that protect our data, provide a secure and dependable virtual environment. Just like turning on the lights, these services are an essential utility to the town. This funding is re request is based on the recommendations of the Duxbury Strategic IT Master Plan that was delivered in October 2019 by the consulting firm of Bloom Shapiro under the oversight of the IT Steering Committee. I'd like to take this time to offer my sincere thanks to the IT Steering Committee co-chair Alex Chin and the members of the committee representing key town and school constituents. Their high degree of collaboration, cooperation, and professionalism provided the valuable insights that created an actionable strategic IT master plan for the town of Duck Duxbury. Thank you. Any questions, comments, debate? Sensing none. I'll ask for a vote. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Article 15, please. Proposal to petition the legislature to allow the town of Duxbury to establish an enterprise fund for the operation of the Regional Old Colony Communication Center, ROCCC, or otherwise known in town as ROC. I move that the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to petition the state legislature for a home rule petition authorizing the town of Duxbury to establish an enterprise fund for the operation of the Regional Old Colony Communication Center, the ROC, provided, however, that the general court may make clerical or editorial changes of form only to the bill, unless the Board of Selectmen approves amendments to the bill before enactment by the General Court, and provided further that the Board of Selectmen is hereby authorized to approve amendments which shall be written within the scope of the general public objectives of this petition. Second.
Any questions? Any debate? Sensing none, um, I'll ask for a vote. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, motion passes unanimously. Article 16. <laughs> Article 16, I move that the town vote to appropriate the sum of $56,250 for the purpose of undertaking a compensation and classification study and to meet said appropriation, raise and appropriate the sum of $56,250 to be expended under the direction of the town manager. Second. Somehow I feel like we've already talked about a classification study once today, but, but are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll ask for a vote. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Yep. That's what I have. Powder Point Bridge Repairs. I move that the town vote to appropriate the sum of $435,000 for the purpose of funding emergency repairs to be made to the Powder Point Bridge, including all related expenses, and to meet said appropriation, transfer the sum of $435,000 from free cash to be expended under the direction of the town manager. Second. Any questions or comments? Sensing none, I'll ask for a vote. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, um, passes, two negative votes, passes, majority passes. Skipping ahead to 27. You know, I keep flipping pages. That's right. That's what I get to. Okay. I move that the town amend general bylaw article 27 to add the following to Chapter 7.26, Stormwater Section 4B, Exempt Activities. 11, public emergency response efforts to remove floodwaters from public ways or for other emergency access deemed necessary for public safety. And to Chapter 7.27, Illicit Discharge, Section 7B, Exemptions. Public emergency response efforts to remove floodwaters from public ways or for other emergency access deemed necessary for public safety. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, raise your hand. All opposed? Unanimous vote. Motion passes. I I'm so. just looking at that. I, I I'm not. I move the town vote. I move the town vote to amend by law Article 27. No, it made the amendment. Was it part of 27? Do you want to vote it as a second motion, or shall I reread the whole thing? It, it, it carried forward, and I didn't realize. I'm sorry. Subject. Town Council, I have a question. I'm inclined to say we're going to we're going to move reconsideration and start all over again. This should have been included, and we just passed. It seems the simplest way is to move reconsideration. I'm sorry, I missed the second part. We put the whole motion on the floor because it hasn't been advertised. Okay, here's what's going to happen. We, if you're looking at your motions, um, there was an, there was a, a second part of the emotion, uh, motion motion on the next page and it was an error and we missed it when we presented it. 
Um, because of the need to advertise uh, to the public what we're going to do, um, we can't just go back and, and amend it, but we can move reconsideration for actually a perf good, perfect reason. Um, if we move reconsideration, that undoes what we just did, and then we will move it again, this time reading all of it. Reading and we, the whole thing? Yeah. So okay. can I have a mo Will somebody make a motion to reconsider Article 27? So moved. Second. Um, we have a motion and a second. Um, if uh, all those in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed? It passes unanimously. Article 27 for the second time. I'm sorry. Okay. Let's do it again. I move that the town amend general bylaw Article 27 to add the following to Chapter 7.26, Stormwater Section 4B, Exempt Activities. 11. Public emergency response efforts to remove floodwaters from public ways or for other emergency access deemed necessary for public safety. And to Chapter 2.7, sorry, Illicit Discharge, Section 7B Exemptions. 11. Public emergency response efforts to remove floodwaters from public ways or for other emergency access deemed necessary for public safety. I move that the town vote to amend the Duxbury General Bylaws by inserting a new chapter 7.26 stormwater and a new chapter 7.27 illicit discharges as printed in the warrant and as amended. Second. We have a motion that's been made and seconded. May any, all those in favor raise your hand. All those opposed, thank you very much. Article 28. I move that the town vote to amend Chapter 12 of the Duxbury General Bylaws entitled Local Historic District Bylaw as printed in the warrant. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any, any comments? Questions? Debate? Over there, John. Please. Hi, um, just one of the highlighted, underlined things. The word bylaw is not hyphenated. There you go. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. Thank you. Twenty-nine and thirty are. We haven't voted twenty-eight yet. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed, motion carries. Twenty-nine and thirty are indefinitely postponed. Thirty-one is indefinitely postponed. Oh, good, a consent agenda. Um, no. Um, we already just did that. All right. Now we're up to the next consent. Oh, sorry. That's That's okay. Just asking you a question. So, sorry, sorry. And so we have another consent agenda. Um, and so I'm looking for a motion to uh, move that the town take the CPC articles 32 through 39 to be passed by consent without debate in accordance with the motions published in the consent agenda provided. However, that if any voter prior to taking the vote requests the right to discuss a specific article, then said article shall be removed from this motion. John, nobody, they can't hear you, hon. I move that the town take CPC articles 32 through 39 <coughs> to be passed by consent without debate in accordance with the motions published in the consent agenda provided. However, that if any voter prior to the taking of the vote requests the right to discuss a specific article, then said article shall be removed from this motion and acted upon in the ordinary course of business. These articles, as printed in the warrant, may be approved with a single vote. Second. May I have a vote for consent agenda, and then we will, then we will talk about each of the articles that is being put in it. All those in favor of a consent agenda? All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. So just read these, right? Read, read those. Okay. 
I move that the town, upon recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee, appropriate the sum of $33,745 from the Community Pres Preservation Act Fund FY 2021 anticipated revenues for the purpose of meeting the requirements of the Community Preservation Act in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44B for the administrative expense and charges for operation of the Community Preservation Committee, all for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020 and ending June 30, 2021, inclusive. Article 33, CPC allocations. I move that the town, upon recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee, appropriate the sum of $202,475 from the Community Preservation Act Fund FY 2021 anticipated revenues for the purpose of meeting the requirements of the Community Preservation Act, Mass General Law Chapter 44B, Section 6, with $67,492 of set amount reserved for open space, $67,492 of set amount reserved for community housing affordable, and $67,491 of set amount reserved for historic resources preservation. Article 34, construction of ball field dugouts at Upper High School and train fields. I move that the town, upon recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee, appropriate a sum of $76,000 from the unreserved, undesignated fund balance of the Community Preservation Fund for the construction of dugout structures at the upper high school and train field softball fields, including all incidental or related expenses. Article 35. CPC construction of picnic shelter at train field. I move that the town, upon recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee, appropriate a sum of $5,500 from the unreserved, undesignated fund balance of the Community Preservation Fund for the construction of a picnic shelter at train field, including all incidental or related expenses. Article 36, CPC, Town Clerk Records Preservation. I move that the town, upon recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee, appropriate a sum of $25,000 from the Historic Resources Reserve of the Community Preservation Fund to be utilized to pay for the preservation of permanent town records to be expended under the direction of the town clerk. Article 37, CPC provide funding for farmland improvements to the DiLorenzo farm. I move that the town, upon recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee, appropriate a sum of $63,000 from the unreserved, undesignated fund balance of the Community Preservation Fund to pay for tree removal, debris removal, and irrigation at the DiLorenzo farm acquired by the town for conservation and passive recreation purposes, including all incidental and related expenses. Article 38, CPC Housing Trust Transfer. I move that the town, upon recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee, appropriate the unspent balance of $318,783 of the funds appropriated under Article 26 of the 2008 Annual Town Meeting to the Duxbury Affordable Housing Trust to implement the Housing Plan Production Plan. Okay. That's it. Very good. I'll take a motion to um, approve all of those. So moved. Second. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, motion carries unanimously. Um, Article 39, we're going to move to indefinitely postpone. Article 39 was, was the original article to deal with the Harrington property because of changes that the town manager mentioned and Ms. Morris mentioned as well. Um, 
the decision was made not to act on that and instead uh, come up with an article with some different wording and, and authorities that we have we voted at at noontime. Second. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed. Mm -hmm. Motion carries unanimously. I think we are on the final article, are we? Yep. Article 42. Uh, I move that the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to grant a permanent utility, electric, and communications easement on what? Board of Selectmen to grant a permanent utility, electric, and communication. What did I say? No, it's me. Oh, oh, all right. Communication on a portion or portions of the town owned property located at 668 Tremont Street and described in a deed recorded with the Plymouth Registry of Deeds in Book 3341, page 332, on such terms and conditions and for such consideration which may be nominal consideration as the board deems appropriate and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to execute any related documentation. Second. Any questions or debate? All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Pa passes unanimously. That completes the business in the warrant for the annual town meeting. I will entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. Sonny die. So moved. Second. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Meeting is closed.